Um, let us move to the next, let's change uh, the, again, direction. We're gonna talk about uh, what is a functional amputation. And one of my favorite people there, Dr. Georgian Botek, who actually operated on my mom. So uh, you know that I really respect her and I like her, so uh, she's gonna give us that talk. No amputation, though. <laughs> no, it was an amputation. No. It was an amputation. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Dr. Shishabor. Nothing to disclose here. Okay. So what is a functional amputation? Well, as we watch Anthony and his gait here, status post transtibial amputation on the left side, we can see that he's functioning quite right, okay? The function we look at is mobility, the ability to walk into a shoe or with a brace, and also quality of life issues. So we're taking a gentleman who's 56 years old now who had an amputation just before age 50 and creating someone who's had years and years of complications with Charcot neuroarthropathy because of diabetes, wound ulcerations, repeated visits to the clinic, total contact casting, crow walker, and now creating more mobility. This is a pertinent topic now because we see that the last two decades have really been marked with limb salvage, limb preservation, amputation prevention. So we see a more minor amputation here as it's distal to the ankle joint in Richard, who now is completely happy because after five years of not being able to put a shoe on, not being able to go to the beach with his family, he can walk it, you can see a pretty good velocity and gait. So both functional in different ways, major and minor amputation. If we look at challenges and facts of amputation now, there are many reasons, of course, for amputation, from congenital limb deformities and tumors and prior history of diabetic foot complications, but it's about 54% that are because of dysvascular disease and two-thirds of those that have diabetes. So it's really this patient population we want to focus on here. The non-traumatic lower extremity amputation in patients with diabetes are known to have high complication rates, specifically wounds either because of dysvascular state or because of infection. And more, the majority of those go on and have a re-amputation, which is also a complication and an unwanted result. Readmission rates are high for all levels of amputations. And even in transmetatarsal amputations, within the first 60 days, 19% required readmission rate. Of course, the more proximal level we go, the less chance of another secondary amputation, where a below the knee amputation wound complication is probably more like 10%. But we know that there are contralateral foot complications that can occur after an above knee or below knee amputation. And so does the duration and in amputation increase. So it's not just in this immediate postoperative period, it's the intermediate postoperative period and the long-term period that we see other complications occur, specifically reamputations. And those who have diabetes and tend to be an amputee are younger. They're more likely to be men who underwent their first amputation at an earlier age, I would suggest in their 40s, then required progression to a higher level, another, another very feared complication from our diabetic patient, and then we're more likely to die at an earlier age. But fortunately, over the last 20 years, we've seen a trend in decreased transtibial and above knee amputations and more partial foot amputations arising. But this also leads to the question of, is that partial foot amputation a desirable outcome and more functional than the more major amputation? We'll explore that. Also, you know, we kind of assume that you have an amputation, your mortality rate is gonna be terrible, okay? That that amputation leads to a higher mortality rate. But there's also a question whether we can really analyze and attribute that to that mortality. So certainly the contemporary thought in medicine is this hypothesis. When preservation of function is the chief concern, amputation should be performed at the lowest possible level. And I think we probably mostly agree with this. But there, are, there is a school of thought that questions that. When you look at even this partial first ray amputation, and there are some surgeons that say, don't perform a partial first ray because 20% go on to a higher level, go straight to the TMA. So longevity does matter, preventing recurrence, reamputation, and having a definitive amputation level to function. This is probably the hallmark study that looked at function with response to walking in gait and has been cited time and time again. And no study has actually been able to exactly reproduce this. But whether you're a vascular amputee or a traumatic amputee, the gait decreases in terms of velocity and the oxygen consumed increases 
per meters walked. So the higher level amputation, the more oxygen consumption, the harder it is physiologically on the heart, and the slower walking pace. This study looked at controls and looked at the third through seventh decade of life, which is unique because other gait studies have looked at amputees that were more traumatic, like those studies out of Turkey. If we look at functional status of persons with diabetes and related lower extremity amputation, you know, we might assume here the hypothesis is that the higher the level of the amputation, more depression, dysfunctional foot. But they had only 35 with amputation and 124 diabetes patients, 89 controls. And the results of their study using the sickness impact profile that looked at independence, socio, psycho, level as well as function found that patients who had undergone these diabetes related amputations had worse functional levels than patient without amputations which was probably what they presumed and the more proximal the amputation should that the more physically impaired again in a small group of patients but probably the most impressive thing was that there was really no significant difference found in the psychosocial functional levels among the groups so psyche over time can change you can become happy and this was also found in an Indian study by Dr. Sinha who looked and found that the amputees, not necessarily dysvascular, but those who were mobile, who did not have pain and could don their prosthesis, overall were happy. They had good quality of life. So what is the dysfunctional amputation? I think it's important to define this if we're talking about function. What makes a partial foot amputation dysfunctional? Well, there's a high rate of dehiscence, ulceration, and wound failure. So this is something we need to improve upon. About half of all these partial foot, and we're grouping transmetatarsals, partial rays, toe amputations, hallux amputations in one big group, have about half percent healing adequately. This is a tremendous cost to our system as well, with the average wound now costing $27,000 to $36,000 to heal. So this is what not to do when we talk about partial foot amputations. Don't take out a bunch of metatarsal heads. This is not a foot. This doesn't even resemble a foot. We can see now the digital complications. that This is not a shoeable foot. This is not going to be a mobile foot, or if it is, not for long. So multiple metatarsal head or ray resections is not a good thing. If we look at this with medial metatarsal head resections, where do we anticipate the problem? Sub three, we have a claw foot and now increased pressure sub three. All the interventions in the world reintroducing circulation, if that were the problem, is not gonna help this become a functional amputation. We have to look at the mechanics of the foot. This patient is actually a Dr. Shishapur patient as well, 54 year old male who had, he came to me with a partial ray am amputation, a partial first ray about two hours away, and it was dysvascular. And he was already told he needed above knee amputation. He said, I just need you to heal my wound. Well, I said, I may not, or I may be able to do that. I'm not so sure. Saw another vascular surgeon said hyperbaric oxygen and wound care therapy. That's, this is it. It's small vessel disease. Well, fortunately, we had someone like Dr. Shishabor available who could do a balloon angioplasty of his pedal arch, posterior tibial artery, and his SFA. And over time, after the TMA, which was subsequent to that, he was able to heal. And I asked the patient afterwards, you know, which foot do you like better? And he said, well, I think the one on the right is more professional. So he wasn't eager to sign up for the TMA on the left side at this point, and he was five years pa past this four-ray resection. But I look at this foot, and I have a lot of these in my practice, actually. They're functional. However, it's not something I'm going to pr promote. I wouldn't suggest that this is a better amputation level than a TMA because he is going to be prone to break down at the hallux now and has increased pressure sub-2. Partial fifth ray amputations, however, do quite well, the, the foot on the, on the right. On the left, I just don't feel like that is, is you know, just kind of giving you the hang loose sign. I don't really think that this is an ideal cosmetic outcome, and it's not that easy to shoe as well. If we look at, this is another no-no. So this is a patient who I see now every few weeks, and he's not my favorite patient, so it's really kind of painful. And, you know, I've tried to convince him to do a TMA, he hasn't signed up for that yet. He doesn't electively want to do the TMA, but this has cost tens of thousands of dollars now over years because he breaks down and he has an ulcer. And he was even had a hospitalization recently. Still didn't sign up for the TMA because the MRI was negative for osteomyelitis. But also it doesn't help that in this, we're not working as a team because his vascular surgeon says, why would you want to do a TMA? Well, that's easy for her to say because she sees him once a year. I'm seeing him all the time. But this is not a functional amputation. When you take out the base of the proximal phalanx of the digit, you're destabilizing that ray and you're increasing the pressure to the adjacent metatarsal. He would have been much better served with a partial ray amputation. A partial third ray would have been fine for this gentleman. 
I'm not a big fan of midfoot amputations either because there's it destabilizes the whole foot. So this is not something that I would like someone to sign up for. This is his foot, and the problem is he has a BK on the right side and no prosthesis. He hasn't worn his prosthesis in a year and a half. His wound's just about to heal. As soon as he can don it and walk with it, I'm going to sign him up for the Symes amputation on the left side, and he's aware of this. So the transmetatarsal amputation is like that golden procedure now. You know, it's ideal. It, it, it beats the BK. It beats the TTA, the uh, above knee as well. However, this is how not to do a TMA. Do not make a square foot. This is meant to be rounded. We need to bevel the first and fifth metatarsals. That lesion sub five, instead of seeing this patient once a year, I'm seeing him every two to three months so he doesn't break down. And he's got extreme peripheral vascular disease too. So we've been able to keep him ulcer free because he's very compliant comes in, wears his diabetic shoes. So we recently undertook a TMA study looking at our TMAs in the five-year retrospective review to say our, goal, our hypothesis was that we'd have decreased mortality compared to the 40 to 80 percent in the BK amputation group. We had the usual culprits for comorbidities, diabetes, neuropathy, hypertension, PAD, and 193 patients. 39%, however, were deceased in five years, which was a little disappointing to me. So definitely our, our primary groups were this. But what was interesting is that those who had previous amputation, I think this has been reported in one paper, so those who had multiple amputations of their foot, ultimately in that TMA, prior to this, had a high mortality rate. So there were more deceased patients after multiple amputations than alive. Within the first year, our, our mortality rate was 11%. The majority died within one to three years following the transmetatarsal amputation, and still those between years three and five. And this was our survival plot. So 61% were alive and 39% deceased. But it does raise the question that the widely held belief in our community is that lower extremity amputation, specifically in diabetic patients suffering from these complications, is a proximal cause of death. We know that ulcers themselves have a high cause of death. 40% of ulcers in the diabetic patient population are deceased in five years. So it's difficult to determine whether the underlying disease increases the mortality alone or if the amputation hastens the process. So in closing, there's a couple surgical and clinical considerations I think we need to make. Reoperation is a common complication, specifically in partial foot amputations. So let's do the definitive procedure. Let's prevent the multiple amputations of the foot. No one wants to come back for repeated surgeries. And yet, major amputations also have higher rates of, on the contralateral foot and have high mortality rates themselves. There's ways to prevent repeated surgeries. Circulation, addressing circulation, not amputating a hallux when you haven't had non-invasive tests. An, an ischemic hallux is a very poor predictive indicator. We're, we're having major three-vessel disease. Don't leave those hang toes. They're not functional. And co-management, obviously, as we've heard the last few days, is a necessity. Function means different things to different people, but we have to keep in mind and try to convince and get to that point and uh, befriend our patients, sit at their level. And it is a battle. We are battling so many times with these patients to save their feet and prevent the below-the-knee amputation, which I still ultimately believe is in the best interest for the majority of people. However, I want to suggest to you that perhaps you, if you have a male with multiple comorbidities, specifically a male who has diabetes, that maybe their first functional amputation may be the below knee amputation. Again, there's a case that Dr. Shishabor has presented multiple times, an 89-year-old lady who came to us who was offered an above knee amputation. He performed the intervention within days of seeing her. I did the TMA a few, year, few days later, and she's happy and independent and functional. If she would have had that above knee amputation or below knee amputation, even though she's 89 years old, her final years would have not been good quality. She would have been depressed. She wouldn't have been able to live a home alone. So maybe it's the younger patient who we should be considering the below knee amputation on and the older patients who can have good quality of life in their later years because mortality rate is high no matter what we do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Botek. That was fantastic and so good for us, you know, because this is not as our cardiologists, and I think most of the people here are cardiologists. We don't get training in this kind of, uh, in this area. Uh, the one question I had, uh, sometimes uh, I've heard folks advocate this concept of, you know, let me just let it auto-amputate. And they let the ulcer just be there and be there and be there, maybe for weeks, sometimes months. Can you educate us as when do you decide to allow a patient to auto-amputate and is that a good idea, bad idea? Mm -hmm. 
Well, you know, that's definitely like palliative care. And I think there is a place for palliative care where I feel like I have a couple patients who may never heal their ulcer. But I think if medically cleared and stabilized, I would always prefer to do that amputation versus letting it auto-amputate. So it just would be the most diseased, most sick of patients that I would say auto-amputation is a good thing. I don't think it's good for the individual. It's not good for the system because they often have repeated hospitalizations, infections, and, and end up with surgery or a higher level at some point. Great. Any other questions for Dr. Bortek? All right, great. Thank you very much. Thank you.